Hey everybody, Doug here. I'm on my back porch with my straw hat on because I just got back from three lovely days at the Kutztown Folk Festival. While down there, Chris and I were able to perform two shows a day with our Pennsylvania Dutch music and humor. But when we weren't playing, we were walking around the festival grounds, shooting video and content for the YouTube channel. So over the next couple videos that I'll be bringing out, I wanna share with you the stuff that I filmed and enjoyed and experienced at this year's Kutztown Folk Festival. I hope that if you have never been there or if you missed this year's festival, that next year in 2024, you can make it down there. It's always around the first week in July. You can check out their website for more information, kutztownfestival.com. They already have next year's dates printed. I just don't remember what they are off the top of my head. But I hope you enjoy the next couple of videos with content from this year's, the 2023 edition of the Kutztown Folk Festival. Mox gut and enjoy. Hey everybody, day three of the festival, Monday, July 3rd, found us doing the exact same thing we did on Sunday, July 2nd, because we enjoyed it so much, we knew we'd find some, we'd meet some new people uh, that would have some new experiences to share with us. So enjoy this last video covering highlights from this year's, the 2023 Kutztown Folk Festival. And again, if you haven't been there yet, put it on your bucket list, Make sure you get there next year in 2024 because I'm, if God willing, Chris and I will be down there again performing and being part of this wonderful, wonderful festival. Till next time, dear friends, enjoy this video, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch, and mox good. Hey, we're here at the Kutztown Folk Festival. I am with Brad Smith. Where are you from, Brad? Schaeferstown, PA. Schaeferstedel, Pennsylvania. Oi, I can good diet schwätze. Tim good, net gone's good. So we've been going around the folk festival asking people questions, but I want to start off with this. Tell our dear viewers what you're doing right now at the Burke's History Center in regards to Pennsylvania Dutch. So we started a Pennsylvania Dutch school to teach uh, folks to learn Pennsylvania Dutch, and uh, it has been wildly popular. We thought if we got 10 folks signed up, that would be a success. We've now had 196 people take Dutch classes with us over now three semesters and we've expanded we've hired two assistant teachers well co-teachers I should say and um, we have now beginner intermediate and now we're planning an advanced level on Brisin Daibuk Amusa my book that's right I've been asking a lot of people this question too so Brad what does it mean to be Pennsylvania Dutch to you what does that mean to you well I like the Pennsylvania Dutch word freilichkeit, which is uh, sort of joy, happiness. And to me, with Pennsylvania Dutch culture, it's hard to put a, explain it, but there's this word freilichkeit, this deep joyfulness, soulful joy that comes with being Pennsylvania Dutch. So to me, it's all about freilichkeit. What an answer, people. Freilichkeit. Brad, thanks so much for all the work that you do, and please keep up the good work, and we're going to get more people taking those courses, hopefully. Yes, absolutely. And uh, if anyone's interested, berkshistory.org, look us up. We'll put the link in the show notes, people. Thanks, Brad. Mox good. Do ah. We are here with? Wanda Schwant. From? Tylersport, Pennsylvania. Where's Tylersport? About an hour away from here, out on the Ridge Road. Near, I s oh, near the Gush and Hoppin people. Oh, okay. I saw uh, Wanda's shirt, which is one of ours, PA yes, Dutch stuff. Ich bin Deutsch. And I had to say, hey, nice shirt. And then she said, what'd you say about our YouTube channel? Well, I watch your YouTube channel all the time. And I even wrote in once. And uh, I guess it was about, I don't know how many years ago. But it was about the Walmart people. Not that memorable, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so we're going around asking people questions. Are you ready for your questions? Sure. Okay, here we go. What is the traditional meal for the Pennsylvania Dutch at New Year's? Oh, pork and sauerkraut. Ding, ding, ding. Question number two. We're going to stay in the food vein. Fill in the blank. Blank, blank, pie. Ground cherry. Whoa, no one said that one yet today. That's a great <laughs> answer. Holy, and delicious, by the favorite. way. And delicious. All right, here's your last question. Go three for three. Here we go. What is the name in Pennsylvania Dutch of the traditional Christmas gift giver for us? Belschnickel. We have a winner, people. Three perfect answers by Wanda. Thanks so much, Wanda. Enjoy the rest of your day here at the Kutztown Folk Festival. You too. Thank you. Hey, we're back at the Kutztown Folk Festival. We are with? Robert Maletsky. And Rob, where are you from? Uh, Schnecksville. 
big town of Schnecksville, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, we have another hex sign painter here. Tell the audience, to you, what, what is a hex sign to you? Uh, to me, it is the embodiment of the Pennsylvania Dutch culture. I think, you know, this is what everybody knows us for around the world. This, our shoe fly pie and sauerkraut maybe. But, yeah, I think this embodies what we are and means a lot to me, actually. So, so when you're painting these, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm thinking, when is it going to be done? <laughs> they take forever. But, uh, you know, I don't even know what I'm starting with a lot of times. I'll just start drawing, and it comes into this and turns into that. You know, this wasn't what I envisioned when I started here. It was going to be a lot different, but that's what it turned into. I know a lot of other friends of mine that are active in the arts in the Pennsylvania Dutch community will often say that they feel a sense of tradition and almost like their their grandparents and their yeah. great-grandparents speaking to them yeah, in a certain yeah. way. This design over here, the six-pointed rosette, a lot of my grandparents around here have uh, that on their tombstones, and the eight-pointed star also on the tombstones. So, yeah, it's connecting me back, you know, 300 years to my ancestors that settled this area. One last question for you, and we're asking a lot of people this. To you, what does it mean to be Pennsylvania Dutch? What does it mean to be Pennsylvania Dutch? It means that I got awesome genes, I guess. I <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm proud to be Dutch, you know. I tell everybody that I am, and a lot of people laugh at me. They're like, you're crazy. They need to know. Everybody needs to know. Well, keep spreading the gospel, my friend. We'll do the same. And your work is beautiful. Keep it up. And uh, we look forward to many years of more hex signs coming from your hand. I will be here forever. <laughs> forever. Sounds good. Mox good. Danke. I am here with? Joe Yakubowski. Joe, where are you from? Uh, Auburn, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, Yak that's not a Pennsylvania Dutch last name. No, no, no. A little bit off. <laughs> uh, a few countries away. Well, we're going to see what you know. Okay, here we go. The, the topic is Pennsylvania Dutch food. Fill in the blank. Blank, blank, pie. Shoe fly pie. Ding, ding, ding. Question number one. We're, we're going to stick with food. Question number two. What is the traditional meal that the Pennsylvania Dutch eat on New Year's? Uh, pork and sauerkraut. Ding, ding, ding. Two for two. Can he make it three for three? This one's going to be a little tougher, but I bet you're going to get it. Do you know the name of the traditional Pennsylvania Dutch Christmas gift giver? Other than Santa Claus, uh, I don't. I'm trying to think what. <laughs> have you ever heard of the Belschnickel? No, not the Belschnickel. Oh, okay. Well, that's a learning opportunity. You'll have to. There's one dressed up here, roaming the rounds okay. at some point. So if you see a guy dressed all in furs and he's real ugly and mean, that's our Christmas gift giver, the Belschnickel. Watch okay. for him. Thanks right. so much, man. You're welcome. Have <laughs> Enjoy the rest day. of your day. You. Yep. All right. I am here with Rich Riley. And Rich, where are you from? Uh, I'm from. Uh... Philadelphia originally, but uh, been up here in the uh, Kutztown area for the last 15 years. And what do you do here at the Folk Festival? I sell books. <laughs> I'm a bookie. <laughs> Rich has a great story. I've known Rich for quite a while. And tell us how your journey with Pennsylvania Dutch. Oh, it was originally, um, I, was, I, I was a Spanish teacher. I speak Spanish and Portuguese. And I said, oh, this is a, a language class up here in Pennsylvania Dutch. And I will take, I decided to take the language class. And in Pennsylvania, if you're retired, they will send you to school for free. It's just that it's not the normal path that people would take because you're not Pennsylvania Dutch, <laughs> no, right? Not, not at all. Not at all Pennsylvania Dutch. But no. now you write in Pennsylvania Dutch. You can speak Pennsylvania Dutch. Do you feel Pennsylvania Dutch? Of course I feel Pennsylvania <laughs> Dutch. <laughs> I drink beer and eat pretzels. <laughs> That's all you need, right? I'm going to ask you one last question, which we've been asking a lot of people this year at the Folk Festival. And even though you're not ethnically, quote, unquote, Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Dutch, but I, you, you embody it for a lot of people, I think, too. What does it mean? to be Pennsylvania Dutch, Oh, in, it, in your opinion. In my opinion, it means a uh, society that is open and inclusive, not an exclusive society, um, and people uh, are very willing to let you join in and, um, and become part of them. I'm glad to hear that because I think some people have a have a, yes. a this myth that you know if you're not one of us you're not you can never be one of us right. and you're a prime example of the exact opposite of that. Right. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I worked with a guy one time. And he says uh, he was Irish himself, and he said, "Oh, they're very exclusive people. They don't they, they don't even want you in part of their society." And I found that to be totally untrue. 
totally untrue. I'm glad that you shared that story with my viewers, Rich. Thanks yeah. so much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Mox Good. Duel. <laughs> Duel. <laughs> I am here with? Chas Cornwell. Where are you from? Illinois. All the way to the Kutztown Folk Festival. What brought you from Illinois all the way here? Orglava. Orglava. Okay, we have videos on the YouTube channel about that. I'm going to ask you some questions. You ready? Sure. Okay, question number one. Uh, what is the name of the traditional Pennsylvania Dutch Christmas gift giver? Delschnickel. Ding, ding, ding. Question number one. Question number two. This is a food-based question. What is the traditional New Year's food that the Pennsylvania Dutch eat? Sauerkrauts. Sauerkraut and what's the meat? Pork. Yes, of course, everything's pork in Pennsylvania Dutch, right? No, that's perfect. All right, here's your last question. I'm going to tell you a word, and all you have to do is say, yes, that is a word in Pennsylvania Dutch, or no, you made that up. Okay, okay. you ready? Here's the word. Uh, schnickelfritz. That's a word. That is a word. Ding, ding, ding. Three, four, three. Are you a schnickelfritz? Yes. Me too. Thanks so much for coming. Enjoy the rest of your stay here at the Folk Fest. Thank you. <laughs> Marco!